Well, hello everybody. Welcome to PBM Money. Today, I want to talk about a phrase that I use all the time, and I realize I probably haven't explained it very well, and that word is groundwork. So, you decide you're ready to invest and you want to start investing money. Okay? You got to ask yourself, are you ready? Are you sure? Have you prepared? And you're like, prepared? Yeah, I got a thousand dollars here. Let's go. Let's give it a go. All right. You're not ready. <laughs> okay, so the groundwork, by, by basic definition, is the preparation work you need to get done before you actually physically start investing. And you need to do this because once you get started, in my opinion, you, will, you don't stop for the rest of your life. This is a lifelong pursuit that you will do each and every month. So, if you're going to do it, let's do it right. Let's dot all the I's, cross all the T's, and let's get prepared. And let me give you an example. Something somewhat simple like building a sidewalk. You know, you would think you just put the form down and pour the concrete and level it off. Boom, sidewalk. No. First you gotta decide where the sidewalk's going to be. Then you have to dig it out so that you can put the form in there. Then you gotta level the ground. I don't know if you've ever done that, but dang, that is not an easy job. And once you get it level, then you build your form on the inside of the hole you just dug. Then you put the rebar in and cutting the rebar to get in there is not an easy job. Uh, then you have to install the expansion joints. Then you pour the concrete bit by bit. Then you level it off, then you finish it, then you seal it. There's a lot of work that goes into just building a sidewalk. And that you're going to be done with in a few days. Something that's going to take a lifetime investing is going to take a minute to get prepared for. So let's talk about some of the groundwork that needs to be done. First off, you need to get a copy of your credit report and you need to work on getting your credit up. If it's not up, keeping it up and uh, cleaning it up. While you're doing that, you need to build an emergency fund. And this is why I said if you've got a thousand dollars, you're not ready. Because you need to have an emergency fund and I recommend starting with a thousand dollars that used to be Dave Ramsey's number back in the 80s I think today it's more like twenty five hundred dollars that you need to put into an emergency fund and you want to do that because if anything happens to uh, you know your house or your car or an accident you know you got your deductible and if you don't use your insurance, if it's just a part that needs to be replaced, we can run a thousand dollars easily. So you got to have a couple thousand dollars stuck in a bank account that you can draw on if you need it. The next thing you need to do is you need to figure out <clears throat> how much on a recurring basis are you going to allow yourself to invest. So let's say it's $100 a month, just for the sake of argument, out of your paycheck. Well, you need to automate your savings, which means going to the bank and say, hey, every month I want you to take $100 out of my checking and put it into my investment account. 
You also need to automate uh, your credit card payments, as many of your payments as you can, but specifically your credit card payments so that you do not miss a due date. Because if, you, if you're late on just one payment, that will set you back a lot on your credit bureau report. So automate those, and even if it's just for the minimum amount, just so you don't mess up your credit report. Then you need to go through your budget. And you can, you, it used to be you needed to record this. And there's software out there that you can do this, but now you can look back on your debit card or your credit card or your bank statement and you can get a good idea where all your money goes and uh, what you're spending. Once you go through your budget, I want you to cut, uh, not drastically, but I want you to cut at least 20% for what you spend every month. Cut 20% of that and then add that to your automatic withdrawal from your checking and savings. Most of us can get 20% by just cutting back on fast food or impulse shopping online, but cut 20% uh, from your expenses. Once you do that and you've got an amount that you're willing and able to invest regularly, every month, this is not a fluctuating, I'll do that, I'll do 100 this month and 200 next month and 150 the month after that. It needs to be consistent. It needs to be every month. Now, if, you're a, if you operate on commission, you, you need to do this in reverse order. You need to figure out what the minimum that you can live on off your commission. And then once you reach that amount, then you need to write a check into your investment account each and every month. That you can't automate. Now, once you get these numbers somewhat set, you're still not ready. Uh, I want you to go over and try, try it, give it a test run for the first month and make sure that cutting 20% doesn't impact you a lot, that you can do it. If, if you're willing, can you, can you honestly do that? And if you can, then let's get a little bit more firm in those numbers and set those in stone. Okay, so now we've got, now we're getting close. I want you to think about what type of investment you want to do. Do you want to do a, a mutual fund or stocks or bonds or real estate or uh, index funds? What is it you want to invest in? And then do the research to find out the best performing and least costly way to do that. For mutual funds, stocks, bonds, almost all of those, there are free platforms that you can invest in those things and there's no commission. You can do it all for free. I want you to find at least two of those types. I want you to think short term and long term also when you're talking about your investment because right out of, right off the bat, I think we, what we want to do is we want to look at uh, short term. And short term, I want you to start accumulating cash in your investment account. Now, each month I told you to automate uh, the $100 a month plus 20% out of your budget. So let's say it's another 100 just for sake of argument. So now you're saving $200. I want you to keep that up for a couple of months and just let the money sit there in your savings account and don't touch it. Now, once you get to a level, depending on what it is you want to invest in, cash is your short-term investment for now. Okay? Now, <clears throat> my opinion is, and, and everybody's opinion is different, my opinion is the first investment should be uh, somewhere associated with the market 
but as safely as possible. That would be an index fund, a mutual fund, and make sure they are no load, no cost. So as an example, let's say you did an S&P 500 index fund, okay? Then, and you're putting in $200 a month. I would take $100 a month and have it automatically put into uh, the S&P 500 account. That way, you're physically saving $200, but you're putting $100 in your savings account and $100 in your index fund. Why, why are you doing that? Well, because on the index fund, you're going to make some interest. And in both instances, uh, you can cash that in later for a long-term investment. And usually what I like to recommend for a long-term investment is real estate. So let's say that the savings amount increases with time. So let's say you get a raise or you get your income tax back or uh, you're able to cut more from your budget and now you're saving about $400 a month. 300 of it to your savings, 100 of it into your index fund. When you get to a certain level, now I want you to go make a long-term investment into real estate. And for if it's your first property, you can get in with uh, very little cash down. If it's not your first property, you can still get in with very little cash depending on the type of financing you get. But the first piece of property will be your critical one. Now, if you choose uh, to do that, your first property is probably four or five years away. That's okay. That's why it's called long term and not short term. But in that five years, that's 60 months times $400. That's $24,000. That's not bad. You could buy a nice little piece of property with $24,000 down. So, okay. Did I do the math right on that? What's what's 12 times 4? 48, 48 times 5, 5,000 times 5? Yeah, 24,000. Okay. So, the long-term goal would be to buy your first little piece of property. The short-term goal here is $400 a month. Your medium term is your... Uh, S&P 500. So from the same $400 each and every month, you got short, medium, and long-term investment. That's a good goal. You keep the $100 a month going forever. It's going to your S&P 500. You just keep that thing going and ignore it. The amount that you can increase into your investment account, that's where the growth is going to be. So let's say you did that after five years, you buy your first property, and it generates, let's say, $300 a month cash flow, and you're saving four. You add the three to the four, it's now $700 a month that you're saving. Now might be a good time to increase the amount that's going into your S&P 500 to $200 a month, and then $200 additional to your investment account. Are you with me? So total you are saving is $700 a month into your investment account. $200 a month of that goes into your S&P 500. That leaves $500 a month that you're saving for your next piece of property. $500 a month times one year is $6,000 a year you're saving towards your next property. So this time, instead of taking five years, it only takes four years to get $24,000. You go buy another little piece of property, and you just repeat over and over and over. Now you will be investing for the rest of your life, and that's how you will make uh, wealth happen. 
most people think they just want to dive in there and start throwing money at things, but that's not how it works. That's why most people fail right out of the chute. They jump in there, they throw some money in the market or into an index fund, something happens to their car, an emergency, something happens to the kids, and you put it on hold for a month or two, you think you're gonna get back to it and you never do because you weren't prepared. Let's take the time, let's do the groundwork, let's get ourselves prepared, it's going to take some time. But if, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing well. My ex-wife used to have a saying, do a job, big or small, do it well or not at all. Let's do this well. And if you do it well, the groundwork, you do it well, you will invest for the rest of your life and you will be wealthy if you do this. I promise. It's tried and true and it's been done in this country for a long, long time. That's all I wanted to do is I wanted to talk to you all about doing the groundwork. Be patient and then invest. You guys have a great day, a great week, and happy investing.